After filming myself getting bitten by a giant centipede, I began to wonder what could be next. It was then that I started noticing that assassin bugs were quite common around my area, both out in the bush and in the more urban locations as well. And just like that, I had my answer. I'd also like to apologise in advance for the audio quality in some parts of this video. I filmed this while I was outside, obviously, and I didn't have my microphone set up with me, so yeah, the sound is a little bit weird, but hopefully you'll be able to understand it. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, I am going to be bitten by an assassin bug. Now, I'm kind of in a hurry to get this over with because I am getting eaten alive by sand flies and mosquitoes as I sit here. That being said, I think it is prudent to give a little bit of an introduction to this animal before I get into the bite because unlike the centipede that I got bitten by before, assassin bugs, as far as I know, haven't ever been featured on this channel before, so you're not necessarily going to be familiar with them. Anyway, Assassin bugs belong to an insect order called the Hemiptera. These, sometimes known as true bugs, include a wide variety of insects that possess sucking straw-like mouthparts. These modified mouthparts are sometimes known as a rostrum or a proboscis. Now, most Hemipterans are herbivorous. One such example is all around me right now, and I know that because even though I can't see any, I can definitely hear them. They're the cicadas. But some, such as assassin bugs, are predatory. And that rostrum is used as a very formidable weapon. It'll stab it into its prey, inject a paralyzing venom, and then suck out the inside. So, not exactly the best way to go. And probably not the best thing to stick into your own arm either, as yours truly is about to be doing. Now, assassin bugs form a family within the Hemiptera called the Reduviidae. And the question some of you may be wondering is, are assassin bugs dangerous? Well, yes and no. Members of the Triatomine subfamily are hematophagous, meaning they feed upon blood, and that includes human blood. And in the Americas, especially South America, they serve as vectors for a disease known as Chagas disease, which kills an estimated several thousand people every single year. However, here in Australia, assassin bugs aren't really that big of a deal. The majority of them, like this species, which is Pristhosanchus plagipennis, a very common species here in southeastern Queensland, are not blood-sucking parasites, but predators of other small animals. And they're generally pretty docile animals. That's not to say they won't defend themselves, but in general, I can handle them with relative ease. Now, I know you didn't come here just to see me chat all day long, and I definitely want this over with, because like I said, the sand flies are treating me like an all-you-can-eat buffet. So, let's get this bite started. The plan is going to be to press it into my arm when it walks far up enough. As you can see, this is quite a docile insect. It's not defensive at all. If I just let it go along to its own devices, I would not get bitten. That being said, it is on the wrong arm at the moment. I would much prefer it on my left arm because I am right-handed. And look at that rostrum. You can really see it now right at the front. I don't like the look of that. Oh, you want the camera as well. Why? All my bugs seem to really like the camera. Okay, fine, have a, have a little climb. Have a little climb. <sighs> Okay, um, well I guess now is the perfect chance to get it on my other arm. So, now the assassin bug is on my left arm, which is much more preferable. I'm just going to let it move along in its own time. A bit rich coming from someone who just prodded it, but whatever. Quick as you like, did you not hear me talking about the sand flies? And I'd also rather be bitten on the inside of the forearm as well, although I'm not especially picky. Now the assassin bug is about the right spot along my forearm, but I'd rather it be more on the... whoopsies. Okay, so same procedure. This time I'm just going to guide it along 
on the inside of my forearm, not on the tongs. Now, just like with the centipede, I've tipped the tongs with a sponge so that it's softer, because I do not want to injure the insect. Unlike the centipede, it's not my pet. That being said, I still don't want to hurt it. Getting close. Okay. You know what? I'm just going to go for it. This is harder than I think. Every... Oof. Oh. Wow. I, I, okay, wow. And now you're just showing me your butt. Um, is that just your rude gesture to just rub it in my face after the bite? Okay, um, well, yeah, the bite. Uh, well, let's get the bug back on my hand. As you can see, it is perfectly relaxed again. And honestly, I am not uncomfortable whatsoever with holding it on my hand. But that bite, it is really starting to sting. It's kind of like a very hot needle has been jabbed into my arm. It's not, doesn't really look like much at the moment. You can see a sort of red mark, but I don't know, I'm quite curious to see how this develops. That being said, it is not crazy painful. I would compare this to a fairly moderate centipede envenomation. You do have to bear in mind, centipede bites have just set the bar so high for me that it is pretty difficult to care much about getting bitten or stung by anything else. In all this time I've been talking, the pain hasn't really... Oh, just cleaning yourself now. Well, good to know it's relaxed. Yeah, so what do I, yeah. So as I was saying, um, in all this time I've been talking, the pain hasn't really elevated very much. It's stayed at a fairly constant level, which is intense enough to definitely get my attention, but not exactly distracting. Like I'd be able to go by my day-to-day -day life without really, without really being affected by the pain too much. And you are really a beautiful insect. There's something about the way assassin bugs move that is just so graceful and honestly kind of elegant. The camera, again. It seems everyone wants to have fun with my camera. I have lost count of how many bugs have crawled on it by now. Um, but look, I, I really need to get you off. Um, so there we go, bug is back in my hand. And honestly, that's kind of it with this video. The pain isn't really increasing that much. The bite, it is starting to swell. There's a little bit of swelling around the mark there. Oh, let's not touch that. Yeah, there's a little bit of swelling that wasn't there before, but otherwise it is nothing too severe. The pain from the bite, while initially quite intense, ended up subsiding surprisingly fast. After 10 minutes had elapsed, it had become only mildly bothersome. By the time an hour had passed, it had essentially become like a mosquito bite. A small, somewhat itchy red bump that was easy enough to ignore. It should be obvious enough, but I'm going to say it anyway. This is not something that you should be trying to replicate. There are many different species of assassin bugs found all over the world. Not all of them are going to have bites that are as... Um, short-lived as this one. And like I said near the beginning, some of the blood-sucking species can vector a potentially deadly disease. Still, the massive majority of assassin bugs, including as far as I know all Australian species, are not a huge deal to humans. Sure, they have the potential to inflict a painful bite, but, like we saw in this video, they are not aggressive insects whatsoever. So, as long as you let them do their own thing, they are not going to bother you. So, that's the end of this video. If you want to check out my centipede bite, then take a look over here. And feel free to subscribe if you enjoy my videos. Thank you very much for watching, that is it from me, and I shall see you again very soon.